Here's a segment from this month's edition of St. Charles Parish Today, a new monthly local talk show. Everyone every day lives with risk. We'd rather not think about it, but each time we buckle ourselves into a car seat, we're taking a risk just by being out on the road. We all take calculated risks, even doing everyday tasks, such as cutting our lawns or fixing our homes. But what if it was your job to manage risk for an organization consisting of more than 400 employees, each doing vastly different jobs day in and day out? My next guests do just that, ensuring parish workers are equipped with the knowledge they need to keep them harm-free on the job and saving vast amounts of taxpayer funds in the process. Monique Granier is the risk manager for St. Charles Parish, and Bill Haymeyer is the parish's training officer. Welcome to the show. Thanks for being on today. Thank you. Well, I want to start first by just asking you to describe what your job duties entail day in and day out. Well, I'm often asked, you know, what is risk management? What do risk managers do? A risk manager's job is to protect the organization from economic and financial threats. And you do this through an ongoing, continual process of identifying, analyzing, and controlling risk at the lowest possible cost. Uh, my job on a daily basis is to reduce the likelihood of something happening, and if it does happen, to reduce the severity. And you might say, well, how do you do that? Uh, you can do it through loss control, risk transfer, and another word for risk transfer is insurance. It could be taking a job that we do and outsourcing it to a private contractor. That way you eliminate the risk. It's avoidance. And uh, risk financing techniques. These are just some of the ways that you do that. Okay. All right, what about you? The training office actually was formed about 18 months ago, and this is the first time that we've actually had an official office to address training needs for our employees. Basically what the training office does is we provide new training technology, uh, training and development through needs assessments. We work closely with the personnel office, risk management office, and the directors. Mm -hmm. And basically we take a look at providing uh, just-in-time training when it calls for it. Okay, and a large part of both of your jobs is, you know, to always keep an eye on what can save taxpayer dollars within the organization. Um, what are some of the ways that you do that, both of you? Well, for me, uh, some of the, the save the taxpayers dollars, and I love it because people, you had used the word, I think, before staff, mm -hmm. and that's, that's really a fun one for me because it's really only me and one other person. This gentleman to my left actually reports to a different department. So it's just me and one other person, and we're a very lean department that more than pays for itself. Uh, there are two ways. You have direct cost savings and indirect cost savings. First, I'm going to talk about some of the direct cost savings, and some of that is mitigating and managing the claims in-house. Uh, timely and efficiently, that makes a big difference. Most people just want to be treated fairly and respectfully and you do what's right. We settle 98% of our claims in-house. Okay. And by doing that, you're saving down the road defense costs and litigation costs. And most people don't realize this, but in the commercial side of insurance, this isn't like your private auto insurance where you call up State Farm and they say, okay, I got you, I'm handling your claim. Here on the commercial side, you have what's called third-party TPAs or like a claims administration, uh, claims handlers. And in doing that, there's always a fee associated with handling the claims. And that is outside the insurance premium. It's not inside. And, and on average, uh, they charge about $1,000 per claim. And just to give you an example, in 2011, we had 20 insurable claims and 170 in-house loss claims. So that's 181 claims times $1,000, roughly, that's $181,000 direct cost savings to the parish and on to the taxpayer. Right. And that, that's phenomenal. Um, also, we appraise parish properties in-house also. By doing that, uh, parish has roughly 129 properties. By using a nationally recognized program, if we had to outsource that, that would be a minimum of $32,000 on upward. And that's another direct cost savings to the parish and the taxpayer. And that more than pays for my department in itself. Uh, also, we're doing the normal stuff. 
Everybody knows the more accidents you have, the more premium you're going to pay. That is similar to your car insurance. Right. Everybody knows the more homeowners claims you have, the more your premium is going to go up. So we try to do the same thing in reducing the number of claims and reducing the severity of claims because that is a direct cost savings, but it's very hard to put a dollar figure on it. Right, and Bill, that's where you come in too, is re reducing accidents. That's, that's yes, your department. Yes, that, that is a very big cost savings for us. Uh, generally, what happens is risk management conducts uh, what we call safety uh, assessments to identify where some of the biggest problems are. Okay. Once I receive that data and information, what I can do is actually develop the training programs to meet those needs. Where, where the savings comes in, because training can be very costly, is we conduct all that training in-house. Okay. We develop it in-house, we deliver it in-house. Then we also measure for the impact of the training program itself. The whole idea is to minimize uh, all the costs associated with incidents and accidents that do occur. Right, and it's a win-win situation because you know you want your your field crews and employees to be safe, but then it also translates into cost savings as well. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, I just wanted to go back and add. I told you the direct cost savings. I just want to mention one or two of those indirect cost savings okay. to you. A couple of those are. Um, we, we do the normal things, analyze and trend the lost data to pinpoint where action's needed. And also going through uh, contractual risk, uh, compliance with regulations. But the other big one for Bill and, and, and Rochelle and I is risk field assessments. Okay. Because and I was joking to you about my ID card being faded from the sun. We spend the majority of our time when I'm not processing claims, we're out in the field because you can see what's going on at that moment. And then Bill and I can sit back and observe and say, you know, we can talk to the guys. Hey, why didn't you wear your seatbelt? Why didn't you wear that piece of safety equipment? And that's where we need to come in and we'll evaluate. Is it a training program they need? Mm -hmm. Is it a policy and procedure? Is it safety equipment? What is it that's going to make it improve to keep that event from occurring? Right. And also is hands on with the employees. Right. And I think that's an indirect cost, but it is a big savings. Right. Right. All right, well, I guess this is more of a question for you, Bill. Um, what are some of the training sessions that you put on for the employees? Currently, last year we conducted our, our first phase uh, leadership skills training program for supervisors and managers, mm -hmm. uh, which involve uh, communications, uh, communicating effectively, um, how to communicate in public life, um, how to talk to residents, those kinds of things. Uh, we also looked at uh, doing phase two, which starts probably next month. We're going to be doing things like team building, uh, uh, performance improvement, uh, performance discipline, how to interview properly. Uh, there, there are several different courses that we're going to introduce to the supervisors and managers. Okay, so good uh, opportunity for those folks to get soft skills training, so to speak. Exactly. Soft okay. skills training pretty much identifies those things that we want to do. On the other side of that, too, of course, is the safety training. Mm -hmm. We have a well-established video library, which I wish folks would take more advantage of. We have numerous courses that we can offer our employees. Uh, we do have a orientation safety program that's fixing to roll out in too much. Uh, two months, which deals with uh, anything from aerial lift safety, uh, trenching and shoring, confined space entry, electrical safety. It's going to cover a whole gamut of different uh, topics for folks to use. Okay, very good. Uh, this is an interesting question to know. What's the hardest part of both of your jobs individually? <laughs> well, I can tell you, you know, I don't think most people realize with me and one other person, the only way we can immediately respond to claims is every two weeks out of the month, one of us is on call 24-7, okay? And that means two weeks out of the month, you know, it's a huge commitment of your private life because you can't really go, I'm awfully envious on Fridays, it's a beautiful Friday, everybody's making plans for the weekend, but when you're on call, you know you've got to be close. You can't really leave the parish, you have to be able to respond. And I mean, I know I've worked a couple Christmas mornings and holidays. It, it happens. You know, you never know when that phone call is going to come, you know, in the middle of the night or on the weekend. And a lot of people don't realize a lot. We have a lot of different activities going on on the weekends. Awesome. Right. And it's not only just office hours. Oh, you know, it's, no. Yeah. And that's that's the hardest part of our job because it's a little bit of a burnout and you're looking at you know, two weeks, and then when we rotate for one of us to take vacation, it puts you on call for three weeks or longer. And I, and I think the hardest part is, is giving up that huge chunk 
of your personal life to be on call to be committed to the job. Mm -hmm. What about you? Actually, the hardest part of my job is remembering everyone's first name. <laughs> Having to deal with over 400 employees is, is very difficult to remember all their names. Yeah, but a, I'm, I'm learning. It's it. a large reach. You know, we have yes. a, quite a large organization. Yes. All right. Well, is there anything you'd like to add, reviewers? No, I just want to say with a soft skills training, don't let that, the sound of that persuade people when we say soft skills because believe it or not, those guys that he's training are going to have the most interaction with residents more than anybody else in the parish. Our frontline guys and supervisors will interact more with residents than anybody else in this parish. Right. And so if we can get better communication skills there, we're hoping that'll make a big impact. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah, I can see definitely where it, where it would. Awesome. Yeah. The, the training office focuses in three areas. Uh, one is the soft skills training, like you mentioned. The other one is skill specific, which actually takes a look at an individual's jobs and try and determine what additional training may be needed. And the third, but definitely not last, mm -hmm. is the safety training. Right. So those, those are the three focal points that we'd like to go after. Right. All right, well, very, very good information. I hope the residents out there learn a lot from this Thank interview. Thank you very much for having us. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Catch the entire episode right here on Channel 6, daily at 5 p.m. Or watch anytime at scptoday.com.